For this problem, we have a 10 kilogram fan firmly attached to a lightweight beam. Now the beam is somewhat flexible as things are normally in real life. And anything that deforms elastically like this beam does is essentially a spring. So in this problem, the beam is our spring. So we're going to start out by figuring out what the spring constant is. We're told the static weight of the fan is again 10 kilos, reflects the beam by 20 millimeters. So this beam, if we just have the fan sitting on it and not operating, the force of gravity from that fan causes the end to dip by 20 millimeters. We can take the sum of forces in y. That's going to be negative the force of gravity equals essentially the spring force opposing it. So we'll have negative mg equals k times a negative 0 0.02 meters. This m is our 10 kilos. So we find that K equals 10 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared divided by 0 0.02 meters. So our spring constant, again our spring is the lightweight beam, is 4,905 newtons per meter. Great. Now we can also find the natural frequency of this system. We've got a mass, which is the fan, and we've got a spring, which is the beam. So our natural frequency, square root of k over m, equals the square root of 4,905 newtons per meter, divided by 10 kilograms mass of the fan. And we find that's equal to 22.15 rads per second. So that's the frequency this entire system would vibrate at if the fan was not moving and we just displaced it a little bit. But in fact, the fan is moving at this omega, 15 rads per second. That normally wouldn't cause much of a difference, except we're told the blade is mounted off center and that it's the equivalent to a 1.5 kilogram mass rotating 50 millimeters from the axis of rotation. This is, in fact, our forcing function. So we can figure out the magnitude of that forcing function by imagining our fan like this. It's 1.5 kilograms rotating at a distance of 50 millimeters and at a magnitude omega equals omega naught or our forcing frequency of 15 rads per second. Now this is constant. So there's no acceleration in the tangential direction, but there is an acceleration caused by this rotation in the radial direction. And we can figure that out by saying this is going to exert a force, F naught, on the mount or the center of the fan. If we do the sum of forces in Y, we get negative F naught equals to the eccentric mass times Ay. Now you'll note I didn't include a weight term here, and that's pretty typical because this isn't a separate mass. It's a mass that's part of the fan already. We can find that the acceleration in Y experienced by this system is going to be our negative omega naught squared R. So that's going to be a negative 15 rads per second squared 
times 0 0.05 meters. That's going to give us an acceleration of 11.25 meters per second squared. So now we know this mass and we know the acceleration and we can find that F naught, the magnitude of our forcing function is then 1.5 kilograms and 11.25 meters per second squared equals 16.875 newtons. Perfect. So now we're ready to find the steady state amplitude of vibration. Now when we say steady state here, we're assuming that all of the natural vibrations have been damped out by friction, and the only vibrations left are those caused by the forcing function. The equation for that is the amplitude equals F naught over K divided by one minus omega naught over omega squared. Our F naught is 16.875 newtons. Our K we found is 4,905 newtons per meter. One minus our omega naught is the speed that the fan is going, rads per second, 15 rads per second. And omega n is 22.15 rads per second, and that's all squared. And we end up with an amplitude of 0 0.00635 meters, or 6.35 millimeters. So when you're running this fan that has its blade not quite centered, on this beam, the whole beam is gonna move up six, six and a bit millimeters and down six and a bit millimeters just because of the eccentric location of that fan blade.